in the harshest blizzards of winter, they are up there living, surviving. We want to know how they're doing that. Mount Rainier is a key habitat for Cascade Red Fox. Cascade Red Fox is endemic, which means that it only occurs in Washington. They live in mountain ecosystems in subalpine parkland, so at the top of the forest before the real alpine areas start. Because of the geography of the Washington Cascades, they have become the most unique genetically among all red foxes. Having the full complement of species in the ecosystem it's a measure of the intactness of the world around us. There's no way we could collect the number of samples, work in the number of areas without these incredible volunteers. Do you like to hike and will you pick up poop? So we're coming into subalpine parkland, which is the classic place that Cascade Red Foxes like to live. Oh, look at this. I think I found something. Uh, is this maybe Cascade Red Fox scat? Tapered ends? I think it could be. We should collect it and send it to the lab. I love when foxes leave a scat like that. They're using it to communicate, but also um, it just looks so staged, it's funny. <laughs> okay, so let's pull out all our supplies from the scat collection kit. So we have our protocol. And this explains step by step what you'll do in the field. We have sampling vials, parafilm to seal the samples, spare labels, two brown bags. We have gloves, small Ziploc bags, a large Ziploc bag, and you have a scale reference to photograph beside the scat. A smartphone with a GPS app and a camera, or you can use a GPS and make sure to bring spare batteries. A data form, you want to bring two pens and two Sharpies. If someone doesn't have a smartphone uh, that has GPS capabilities, uh, Mount Rainier has some equipment that you can check out for the day for your survey. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna record the waypoint in the, your GPS app on your phone, uh, and we'll label it with the field ID. Okay, Tara, do you wanna record the information sure. in the daily data form? You bet. So we'll start with a field ID that'll be the date. So just 20 for the year, two zero for the year, zero six, for June and 2-2 for the 22nd, followed by your initials, and then an S for SCAT and 0-2 for the second SCAT that we collected today. And then you'll write our location, the latitude and longitude and the elevation. And we want the latitude and the longitude in decimal degrees, and you can see on the protocol what that looks like. And I'll pull it up on my GPS app and there should be a space there for whether the scat's fresh or dry. Okay, and then just finally, any kind of descriptive information on how the scat looks. Do we see any bone fragments in there? Is there a little small mammal skull? Are there hairs or are there berries? Do we have any sense of what the animal ate? Is it super fresh? That's when the DNA is really gonna be well preserved. I'm gonna take a photo of the scat with a scale reference in one of the containers showing the field ID and the other information in it. And I take this before I sample the scat so it's intact and you can see exactly what it looked like. Okay, so I'm labeling two vials with the field ID and then the latitude and the longitude from our GPS app or from our GPS. Okay, and then we think it's fox, cascade red fox, so VUVU is the code. And then this is the study area's Mount Rainier, MR for Mount Rainier National Park. For each scat, we're going to collect four different samples. So we're going to have two vials and we're going to have two brown bags. So if you want to put on your gloves, and this just protects yourself and it protects the sample from DNA contamination. Okay, so we'll start by collecting the two samples in the vials. So we just want a small amount of scat. So if you want to start by removing the parafilm from the top, so you just want to collect one to two mils, just a very small amount from the sides or the end of the scat. That's where you're going to find most of the carnivore's DNA. And we'll put it in this vial that we have filled with ethanol that preserves the DNA. 
Okay, so then we're gonna seal this lid with parafilm. Basically, it's a waxy film that just has a backing on it. You'll stretch the parafilm around the lid and it'll secure the lid. There you go, so you, that's a perfect amount of stretch. You start going right around the top of the cap and then come down. You don't need to go too far. You really just wanna focus on the edge of the cap. Twist over the edges at the end there. And now we'll take a second sample just like this one, just a little bit is all you need. It's amazing how much DNA is just in that tiny bit of scat. And now we're going to divide the remainder of the scat in two, and we're just going to put each half in a brown bag. And then we'll put these two brown bag samples together. Now that we've collected the four samples from the one scat, you can go ahead and remove your gloves using a clean technique. Just pull from the bottom, bring your glove into the other one, and then pull from the bottom. And then you can just discard that in your backpack. Okay, so then our final step is just putting away the vials so they each go together in a Ziploc. We seal it up and we add the field ID label. This is just in case the ethanol leaks out. Put them in a big Ziploc that was in the sample collection kit. And, and here's the data sheet for oh, that thanks, too. Oh, thanks, Tara. We can put that in there with our samples. All right, you wanna pack up and we'll hit the trail? Okay. okay. All plants and animals are part of our cultural heritage and understanding wildlife is part of the original stated mission of the National Park Service. When Jocelyn started her nonprofit, it was a really logical collaboration to begin because we can't do all of the work that needs to be done. The Cascades Carnivore Project is soliciting volunteers to help us so that we can cover more area and get to more locations than we could by ourselves. People care about having places to go that are wild. They care that our ecosystems are healthy. People care to know that there's wild animals out there even if they might not see them. You can contribute to this project in really meaningful ways. You don't need to have a PhD to follow the protocols. If you can follow directions, you are a scientist. You are actively helping to contribute to carnivore conservation. 1,500 samples have been contributed to the Cascade Carnivore Project that was one scat at a time.